In this video, I will demonstrate how to create a class that uses a technique known as lazy initialization that will enable us to defer the execution of a set of CPU intensive tasks. And I'm going to start by looking at an application that I wrote that provides data for the uh, user to consume. And it uses a, a technique that will load all of the data when the application starts. And uh, we'll be able to compare and contrast this to the lazy initialization approach shortly. So a little background here as to what this application is doing. I have uh, a, a set of three uh, collections that I'm populating uh, when the application starts using the uh, .NET framework provided class called list. And I'm using a list of long here. I have a list generator with three methods, one for e generating even numbers, one for generating Fibonacci numbers, and one for generating uh, prime numbers. So these act as uh, data producers. And you'll notice that I am actually uh, passing in as an argument the invocation of these methods in turn. So uh, they will execute in sequence one at a time. And I won't be able to actually consume the data in the application until these three uh, collections have been populated with data. So uh, you'll notice that I have a st created a stopwatch here. And I'm going to be displaying the elapsed time when I run the code. So. Let's go ahead and see what we have. Well, it looks like the uh, the even numbers are ready, the Fib Fibonacci numbers are ready, but I have to unfortunately wait for the prime numbers to uh, to be populated in the corresponding collection, and that took somewhat a little bit over 11.3 seconds. So, uh, but but the you know the benefit here is that now they're all available. I have my prime numbers ready to use. I have my even numbers ready to use, and so forth. OK, the, again, the drawback here is that uh, if I'm not interested in one or more of the sets of data, then I, have to, I still have to incur that overhead of, of waiting for the data to be generated. So the technique that we're going to look at is uh, the lazy initialization. And we're going to uh, be looking at a class provided by the .NET Framework class library called lazy of t. I have already uh, opened the page in the .NET uh, developer network, sorry, the Microsoft developer network, where we can get documentation on the Lazy of T class. This was uh, implemented uh, back in .NET uh, Framework version 4, which means that uh, you'll need to have at least that version to be able to use this uh, class. And uh, I'm going to scroll down a little bit here to the remarks section. It's interesting to note it says, use lazy initialization to defer the creation of a large or resource-intensive object. Well, that's not our case. Or the execution of a resource-intensive task. Well, that's where we are. We have a CPU-intensive task. And this is also interesting, particularly when such creation or execution might not occur during the lifetime of the program. OK, so as I said, we don't, we don't want to have to incur overhead when not necessary. Well, our objective here is to. Uh, defer execution until an explicit request is made uh, by the consumer. OK, so uh, now let's take a look at uh, a little bit of the uh, detail information of the backing detail for, with respect to this class. So there's a properties uh, set that consists of two properties. The one I'm interested in here is the value. It says, uh, gets the lazily initialized value of the current instance. OK, and if that it doesn't say it here, but if that uh, if the instance isn't available, it will be uh, made available. Uh, and uh, if it already is available, it will be just passed along to the uh, requester. And we're now going to look at the constructors. The one of interest here is the third uh, lazy of t that takes in an argument func of t. So in this case here, when the lazy initialization occurs, the specified initialization function is used. This uh, initialization function will represent our strategy. In other words, it will be, uh, in our case, the, the methods uh, of generating the prime number, the even number, or the Fibonacci numbers. OK. So the, uh, the goal is when, when we create an instance of a uh, using the lazy of t constructor with the uh, 
the, the specified initialization function, that the delegate that we pass in is going to uh, uh, produce the, the lazily uh, initiated value uh, when needed. So that, that's our objective. So let's uh, get, jump back into the code. I have uh, already implemented a lazy list for us that uh, inherits from I list of T. I have a backing field here that represents our subject. And I have a constructor that's going to take in a delegate of uh, the required type. I also have a note here. It says, very importantly, create an instance passing in the delegate that is invoked to produce the lazily initialized value when it is needed. And you'll notice here that when I create my instance, I pass in as an argument a lambda expression. And that lambda expression will be evaluated to the execution of the corresponding strategy passed in by the caller. So it will know how to uh, populate the list on request. And uh, now for the, the, the rest of this uh, uh, implementation, I have uh, the methods index of insert all the way through <laughs> the, uh, <coughs> the, the get enumerator. So the, all of these have to be implemented. And you say, oh, that's a lot of work. Well, it's actually not, uh, not too much of a problem. So when uh, when, when you create your backing field here, we, we specify that as our subject, and that subject is of type lazy of I list of T. Okay, So inside of each one of these methods, we use our subject's value. And again, the value is going to provide us the, the instance if it is available, and if it's not available, it will make it available. And we take that uh, instance of the lazy of I list of T and just call into in its own index of function or its own insert function. And you'll notice that I'm doing that can, you know, each time through in each one of the cases. So it's just a matter of uh, uh, you know, en enhancing this just a little bit so that it meets our needs. So it's not, uh, not a lot of work at all. OK, so, so I've shown you how to create that uh, your own custom class. And uh, we're going to go back to our program. And we're now going to change this so that uh, instead of loading when the application starts, we're going to uh, take advantage of the lazy loading. So I've already written some code here as a snippet. I'll just drag and drop this in. And I'll use my lazy list. And uh, the, the, main, the main difference here, you'll notice that the argument that's passed in does not invoke the uh, corresponding uh, data producer. In other words, I don't call into even numbers. I pass in the address. So if you recall the, the previous example, I was actually invoking the method here. You just pass in the address uh, because the uh, lazy list uh, takes as its argument the, the strategy. And it is uh, going to be invoked via this lambda expression. OK, so if I uh, run the program again, we noticed that uh, it took uh, 0.0015 seconds approximately, much, much faster. And uh, if I'm only interested in the Fibonacci numbers, then when I press the list letter F, they will be uh, generated and then uh, consumed. OK, at this point, the Fibonacci numbers are available. So if I press F again, they don't have to be regenerated. Uh, obviously, if I press the letter P, we will incur the overhead, but this is again because it's the uh, I've deferred the execution uh, of the loading of the data until I actually uh, require it. So after my 11 seconds or so, I get my data. But again, as before, when I press P, the the data is still available in my list. So that's uh, quite interesting. We so what we've covered here uh, is how to take advantage of uh, lazy loading. We've looked at a proxy mechanism or a proxy pattern. So the lazy list here represents a proxy or a stand-in class for our list. And uh, we've also uh, discussed the, the strategy pattern. So uh, anyway, that's, uh, that's the end of the demonstration. And I hope you enjoyed. Thank you. Thank <music> you.